All right, I'm at the start of my first ride. Got the Garmin going to track how much descending I'm getting. I'm excited, it already feels pretty cool. I'm running an Eco right now. There's this little log here at the beginning that I like to bunny hop. So let's see how this, uh, let's see how this. Ah! Ah! Well, wasn't that bad, it feels like a bike. It's Bruce from the Pro's Closet. I am still working at home, so we're coming to you from my garage. And today's gonna be a good day because I got a new bike to play with. You can see it right here. This is the Intense Taser Pro. And yes, this is an e-bike. Intense has loaned me this bike for a couple days so I can sort of try it out, get a feel for it, and decide if I wanna buy one for myself. If you follow our channel, you might know I'm a dad. I'm an 18 month old. He's a complete handful, so I actually don't get to ride my mountain bike that often. And when I do ride it, I only go out for maybe an hour or an hour and a half at a time. And because my local trail system is so steep, I only manage about five, six miles in that amount of time. So, you know, I really want to ride more, but I really also just want to maximize the little time I do have to ride. So I've been thinking about trying an e-bike for a really long time now. Little disclaimer, I do know that e-bikes are sort of contentious in the US. This isn't gonna be a video arguing about whether or not e-bikes should exist, whether or not they should have trail access. There are local trails in Colorado that do allow e-bikes. I'm gonna stick to these trails. I'm gonna go when there's low traffic and try to be as respectful oh, you're good, dude. and courteous to the trail and other trail users as I can be. But I'm really excited to try this out and see what I think. Um, so let's take a look at the bike. Size medium. Uh, I usually ride mediums on about 5'8". And the geometry is actually pretty close to my current enduro bike. What I think is really interesting about the Taser is that it's designed to be a dedicated mullet bike, meaning it has a 29 inch front wheel, 27.5 rear wheel. I've messed around a little bit with mullets, but mainly for the last few years, I've been sticking to the 29 front and rear. This bike, it uses the Shimano Steps motor and it's got a Shimano drivetrain SLX. You can see it's got XT cranks, but everything else is SLX. And it has the Dior XT four piston brakes, just for a little more stopping power, 200 mil rotors, 160 millimeters of travel in the front, 155 in the rear, full factory suspension. You can see this is the e-bike version of the 36. It's got slightly thicker stanchion walls just to add a little bit of stiffness since e-bikes weigh a little bit more, that stiffness helps. And then a DPX2 in the back and a matching Kashima transfer dropper post. Eco feels pretty good. See, it's got two other modes. So if I bump it up one. Oh, so now it's in trail mode. That's yeah, more powerful for sure. It's been boost. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay. Wow. So when I picked the bike up, I also snagged a second battery. So this is what the battery looks like. It's a Shimano battery. Now what's cool about these Shimano steps motors is that the batteries are actually super easy to change, like sort of on the fly. It goes right here, here's the hatch. Just open it up and you have a key. You just take it out with the key, swap it and you're good to go. I'm probably gonna need a second battery for the ride I'm planning to do tomorrow. I wanna talk about what I'm gonna do. I used to be a park rat. I would ride at the bike park every weekend, all summer. I used to get like 8,000 plus feet of descending in one day. With my local trails, I have no way to accomplish that unless I'm just gonna ride for like an entire day. <laughs> I'm testing this bike for work. My wife wants me home by about 3 p.m. and I'm gonna try and see if I can knock out 
over 8,000 feet of descending because that is about what I do at a bike park if I get, let's say, seven, eight runs. That's usually what I do when I go to the park. If you get about 1,000 feet per run, it's about 8,000 feet. So maybe I can do better than that with this thing. I'm going to get the bike set up, you know, air up the suspension for my weight, set the sag, turn a few knobs, set the saddle height, put my pedals on, get it ready. And tomorrow morning, we're gonna take it out, see how she rides. All right, so if we take a look at the Garmin, I've climbed 1688, almost 1700 feet. Um, so I'm gonna go back down, do it again, come back up, go down, and uh, hopefully I'll hit my goal today. Uh, 8,000 feet, we'll see. So when you're climbing, you can't really turn off, you can't get complacent. When you hit uh, loose or techie bits, I still gotta be on it. I pedal out, pump, whatever, pick good lines. So, it is, it's still very engaging and definitely more pleasant. I'm pushing up the hill to hit this feature. Definitely you feel the weight here, it's a good, 15 or so pounds heavier than my normal bike. Woo. Just finished lap two. I am at 2592. Good progress. So I'm pedaling back to the start of the trail on this little like traverse. And for maybe five minutes, I just totally forgot to turn on the motor. I was pedaling with it off and I hardly noticed. I mean, as long as it's flat, you really don't need the motor. Feels fine. Done three laps, three different trails. I've got 3580. I'm spending a lot of time just uh, setting the camera up. So I'm just gonna, film a little less and try and knock this out a little faster. All right, 4,200, a little over halfway. I gotta say, I really underestimated how hard this would be because I am pretty tired. My weak link is my hands. You know, I haven't, done this much descending in a really long time so my hands are getting really tired but uh let's see we got a little red bar i'm just going to swap the battery now since i'm halfway um just to be safe take a break and get going so i'm in the car right now like a genius i did not put the spare battery in the car so i have to run home and grab it it's good though i am really tired so this will be a nice break there it is on my workbench. So disappointing. All right, back to it. Another thousand feet in the bag. I gotta start being more careful. I'm getting really tired. I might crash. <laughs> we'll see, I gotta be careful. Woo! All right, less than a thousand feet left. I am really starting to lose it. My triceps, my shoulders, my hands especially, they're just getting blown up. This last two, one or two laps is just gonna be brutal. I think I got more than enough charge. I might have to uh, use the boost mode a few times because I'm getting weak. Back from the car, we did 
8,000 feet, a little bit extra, just in case. And you can see I had one little red bar left. Really don't know how far that little red bar would have taken me, but if it was a uh, cell phone, I would put on a charger, probably. Um, you can see with two batteries, I managed just over 30 miles, which, uh, you know, look at the amount of ascent. That, that's a steep 33 miles right there. All right, that's a wrap on the Taser. That ride was pretty fun, but it was also pretty hard. I definitely underestimated how hard it would be. You know, I kind of thought, oh, it's an e-bike, I'll be cruising. But uh, by the last half, I was fading pretty bad. You know, my hands were in a lot of pain. My shoulders and my triceps were super tired. When I actually started cramping my quads a little bit on the climbs, even though I have pedal assist, you know, I'm still working pretty hard. You know, pedal assist, it helps you pedal, but you still have to put the work in. And the harder you pedal, the more it assists you. So I ended up charging up some of the climbs in the first half and really using oh. a lot of energy, which was kind of a mistake. Another big mistake I made was not bringing enough water. Again, I thought e-bike, it'll be easy. I brought two bottles and a small hydration pack with about a liter in it. And I drank it all before I even changed the battery the first time. Just because it's an e-bike doesn't mean it's easy. Overall impressions, the bike's really good. You know, it rides a lot like my normal enduro bike. Hitting jumps, hitting drops, rock rolls, steep stuff, it, it kind of just feels like a regular bike and I ride it like that. The only place where the weight really became an issue was hiking. I, I hiked up the trail a few times just to hit a feature a second time. And you really do notice that this is a 50 pound bike and you're pushing it up the hill. I tried a few times to like turn the pedal with my hand. I had to like deadlift it up the hill a couple times. And, but I think Intense did a really good job because it feels like just a really well-rounded enduro bike. I would get beefier downhill brakes. I'd get Saints or Codes or something. Definitely, I burned through these brake pads. I, I would want something a little meatier. And depending on your local trails, that may or may not matter to you. I would also probably run a Cush Core front and rear on this thing. You've got a motor, the weight really isn't gonna matter that much and it's gonna help you know, just give me a little more peace of mind. I, I did rim out a few times um, and it made me a little nervous. So that's, you know, personally, I like push cores. Um, you may not. If I hit something really hard, I would just put the bike in trail mode. And that's one thing that's really great is that, you know, it's super easy to change modes. It's just a push of a button when you need it. You just put it in trail, you put it in boost when you need it, turn it off when you need it. And mostly I would just right before descent, just turn it off because you know, especially when you're on something really steep, uh, if you put in a pedal stroke and the motor sort of adds a little push, it kind of messes with your uh, timing a little bit. It felt a little weird. So I just turned it off. And then uh, if I hit like a little uphill bit or a traverse, you know, I could just turn it right back on instantly. Super easy. The type of stuff I'm doing, like a one hour lunch ride or a, you know, something like that, it actually could be like a big game changer for me because the amount of time I do like one lap on my normal bike, I can probably get three in on this bike. So that's a big deal. I can get a lot more descending volume. And for people who, you know, really want to get better at descending, an e-bike could be a really good tool for training because you just get all that descending volume. It's like being at a bike park. I mean, you get to hit lines again. You get to, you know, really work on skills. And for stuff like recovery days, it could be a huge game changer because, you know, it saves your legs a little bit if you're already blown up. And you can turn your recovery days into skills days. That'd be really cool. Um, am I gonna buy a taser tomorrow? I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, after riding it today, I kind of think it might be a slippery slope where, you know, I know myself, I'm the type of person where I might just end up riding the e-bike all the time. I'm not quite sure, but I am saving money. I, I've decided to start setting aside a little money, so maybe you might see me on a taser in the future. Hopefully that gives you something to think about. Thanks for hanging out with me while I rode my bike. 
I'll see you guys next time.